It's a place of wild beauty. Fall Creek Falls is the highest waterfalls in the eastern U.S. Calling out to nearly a million people every year who come to look, listen, and explore. One of the things that makes this place special is a tree, the eastern hemlock. These hemlocks are part of the beauty of the waterfall. I've been to the California redwoods and to the giant sequoias, and it was the same kind of experience. Hemlock is our redwood tree. One of the largest trees are going to be four to 500 years old. They can grow in the shade of their own adult trees for dozens or maybe even 100 years. They provide a unique habitat for wildlife. They provide shelter for streams, keep the water cooler so drought can flourish. There's really not a replacement for them. But now, these irreplaceable trees are dying. We can do actually two injection sites per root. So Joe DeCola is a horticulturalist with a company called ArborJet. Yeah, now you want to push. Today he's teaching these foresters and biologists how to inject insecticide donated by his company into the trees to protect them from a tiny insect that's killing them. The hemlock woolly adelgid. The adelgid is a piercing, sucking insect. And it is trying to get the sugars from the base of the needle. And that is actually where the insecticide that we are using moves to, and it'll protect the tree when the adelgid attacks. You inject it into the tree, it moves upward in the stem, and it gets into the needle of the tree. Because the insecticide goes directly into the tree, it can be used to treat hemlocks growing near streams like this one without getting in the water. For trees growing away from the water, the insecticide is usually applied to the ground and taken up through the roots, which is quicker and more cost-effective for treating large areas. If the injections are done correctly, the treatment hopefully will last three to five years, and then we'll have to come back in. It's a step in the right direction, but not a solution. The best we can do is get it under control. The chemicals are just a way to kind of buy time because the long-term solution is getting the different mix of predators, natural predators of the adelgid. Most of the beetles are usually at the top of the jar, and you can see them. Like these beetles, native to southern Japan, being placed on infected trees by University of Tennessee entomologist Pat Parkman. It's actually a lady beetle that's a specialist predator on hemlock woolly adelgid. It's called biological control, finding natural predators for pests like the adelgid that have accidentally been unleashed on an area where there is no natural mechanism for keeping them in check. Well, we've got 3,100 beetles today. After working with the beetles for almost six years, Pat is beginning to see the fruit of his labors. In several sites, we're finding beetles. The damage is stabilized, and the trees seem to be recovering. Despite their success, treating the infestation with the beetles is a costly process. It takes a lot of time and effort to produce beetles, so you can only treat so many sites. There's no way to save all the hemlocks. There's simply too many trees spread over too large an area. So foresters and biologists got together and identified hemlock conservation areas, small stands of trees they felt just had to be saved. We try to get areas that have endangered or threatened or in need of management uh, species of fish, like the uh, black side dace or uh, green salamanders, Allegheny wood rat. So we're prioritizing habitat for those species. We're trying to save pockets of them, prime specimens of them, big ones. We're trying to save them in areas that they're part of the view shed. It's a hard fought battle that at times feels almost impossible. Do I feel hopeful about saving the hemlocks? Um, I actually feel sort of overwhelmed. If we lose the eastern hemlock, it's gonna have a big visual or aesthetic impact, and we also think it's gonna have a huge biological impact. Considering the manpower and the funding that's required, if we can save 10% of the hemlocks, that would be uh, probably maybe the best case scenario. It really kind of breaks my heart to see us having to choose areas like this and not get everything. It's a sad feeling for all of us who love the outdoors and know how important they are for the wildlife, for the fish, and just for feeling of uh, tranquility when you're out among these trees. But still, there is hope that someday 
the mighty hemlock will once again rule our eastern forest. I have some hope for the future. There's a lot of folks out there in, in China and Japan looking for natural predators that could be put in that mix. We hope to save enough hemlocks to where from these sites where we've saved them, they'll spread out again and become uh, like it once was. Of course, that will be after I'm gone and most everyone else gone. There'll be generations to come. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side.